There have been a lot of videos in this break, international break, about Ryan Gravenberch. You could probably add to them even now, considering how well he's playing for the Dutch national team. And I think a real thing that everyone is missing is the holistic side, the almost non-stats or deep stats side of what Ryan Gravenberg is actually doing and how you don't just need to list off the amount of interceptions or the amount of passes or whatever it is that makes him a good player. There are plenty of things that I'm sure that someone like Jurgen Klopp, someone like Arne Slot, someone like Thomas Tuchel, though he didn't appreciate him in the same way, and possibly even Julian Nagelsmann would have really enjoyed and wanted that kind of player in their side. It's fair to say that he's gone through quite a journey, not only because of club circumstances for Liverpool, but also because of the overall meta changes in football right now. And I think he's currently benefiting from managers wanting to play a system that benefits exactly his kind of style and possibly is where football is currently going. I'm not saying therefore it's only going to be now that he's good, but if you can build up your confidence in a time when football is more built towards you, then you're more likely to have that long career or at least more likely to be confident for the time when, hey, maybe there are some other players that become the emphasis of the team. And that's why Ryan Gravenberch is so interesting and important to Liverpool. Outside of me just sitting here and going through a series of graphs, a series of stats and telling you, well, he gets this many more interceptions or he does this thing, all those things are great. And I'm sure you've all seen those videos. I'm sure you've all seen why he has the vision, why he has the physicality, why the numbers are improving. But my main reason for thinking is so good is because it is proof, at least in the short term, to the Liverpool players and the Liverpool fans that it isn't just, oh, Klopp's gone, we need to improve. Oh, it isn't just, well, this previous set of players need moving out, we can bring in some new guys. And of course, Supermendi is the very obvious version of this. He probably would have come into the side at least taking away some of the role of Ryan Gravenberch, if not just directly taking away his role in the summer if Liverpool had got him. And I think it's worth acknowledging. Like, I'm sure that Liverpool knew there was a decent player in there, but whether they were willing to give him the long-term chance, whether they knew that he could evolve to this level, whether they felt that his confidence was down to such a degree or he just hadn't been performing at that level for quite some time, or whether the stats guys and the research team behind the scenes had done so, has done so much work and already knew, well, if we're going to bring in someone like Slot, then we're going to be able to improve our team X amount. And if this is where football is going, our team is going to improve in this direction, maybe there's an argument to be made for that. Because after reading Ian Graham's book, How to Win the Premier League, which is hopefully also an instruction manual for Arne Slot this season, I see how Liverpool work a little bit better. You see why Liverpool might build towards someone like Arne Slot and why, whilst we're busy crediting Jurgen Klopp and Pep Lingers with so many of these signings, Liverpool's data guys had a huge influence on what Jurgen Klopp do now does or did and what Arne Slot now does and did. And I think that's important to acknowledge here. Like, you know, there's a reason Jurgen Klopp has gone to Red Bull and I think a lot of people are busy talking about Red Bull cans and corporatism. The underlying element is the stats which back up the real life data that a lot of these coaches want to see. The stats that Red Bull really buy into to identify so many of these young talents which then go out and go across Europe. And Ajax arguably is one of those breeding grounds in a similar way to the way that, you know, the guys at Red Bull seem to be. It just takes people down a slightly different route. And he went through this. He's been a wonder kid since a lot of people would say day dot, but since a very young age, right? He's very talented. He's clearly one of those people who naturally possess a lot of the attacking attributes, vision attributes. I know people always talk about his passing stats improving more recently. He was playing in a slightly more progress role last season under Klopp. And now this season he's playing I mean, he's playing in more of a hybrid role, but he's playing at least starting in a slightly deeper role, receiving the ball. He's now able to let the ball turn across his body. Liverpool, weirdly, like, I think this is a huge part of why Ryan Gravenberch and why McAllister are key to this team, are much better at keeping possession slightly deeper than they were last season. They were a lot more of a front foot team last season, a lot more aggressive, a lot more let's get it from back to front as quick as possible. Let's get it down to those attacking players in a much more efficient fashion. Now, under slot, there is a lot more about control. There is a lot more about how the ball moves. And I'm not saying none of these things happened under Klopp. Of course, these things happened under Klopp. But the way that he does it, the style and the speed at which he does it is very different. And the emphasis, therefore, is very different as well. Like I said, I could have listed a bunch of stats telling you why he's better. 
But I think the other side is his confidence has changed. And the same will be going on for other Liverpool players as well. You can see he's just willing to, more willing to try things in games. He's been given that licence to actually just go out there and do some of this stuff rather than, say in a previous era, even just last season, we would have seen hey, possibly you're just going to get the ball and you're going to move it onto this area. You're just going to get the ball and you're just going to move it onto this striker or this player or wherever it goes. I think all of that is really worth acknowledging. Giving players agency, giving players the ability on the field to be able to actually do something that feels more natural to them or builds on natural parts of their game is going to make a big difference. I also get that, you know, clearly he's, he's someone who's growing into his body still. He's still only 22 years old. He's still finding what the limits and outer bounds of where it is that he can push himself on the field is he's very tall he's clearly got good pace the amount of times where you think he's maybe lost the ball and he just comes out the other side of it Liverpool have got a number of players like that and I feel like maybe there was a slight stats push in that kind of area at one point for Liverpool they've got people like Nunez people like Gakpo people like Gravenberch I mean there are even other players in the team who at times it looks like the ball's just slightly too far ahead of them slightly too far away from their body and suddenly they're like halfway down the field being able to progress the ball that quickly for Liverpool and being able to have that vision, I think he has a great passing vision, but also just bring it down the field makes a big difference. Seeing the gaps, seeing the shapes, all these kind of things make a big difference to Liverpool's season overall. The real concern, I guess, for him is A, staying fit, but B, staying in the team. Rotating players in and out, especially if we feel like Maybe from as particularly from our perspective, we're building a team around him. I'm not 100% sure that is the case right now, but at least the stronger performers within the side are worth building a team around. We're going to get into a position where he feels like not an undroppable player, but a player that Liverpool can't afford to not have in the team. And I think that might be a fallacy. I think he's a very good player. I think he's certainly someone that Arne Slot will be appreciating, that a national team coach will be appreciating, that there are plenty of other people who will be like, hey, wish we'd signed him. Manchester United fan channels consistently seem to be saying right now, I wish we'd signed him when we got the opportunity. Same goes for Cody Hakpo. But also, I think someone like Arne Slot is probably more familiar with the style of play of both of these styles of players. And let's face it, like it might also be a convenient time for him to come in as that kind of coach. I think... You know, overall, we've seen an improvement in the side, or at least changes within the team that feel like improvement because we knew where the issues or the flaws were in Klopp's system and we knew possibly what needed to fix it. It was possibly not even a Klopp system at that point. It was possibly a Pep Linger system, but with Klopp at the very top of that, we're sort of, you know, learning around that. Anyway, point is, I think what we're now seeing is a holistic feedback on the stats that have been run and run and run at Liverpool. They don't only run one set of stats, they'll run five, six, 10, 50, 1,000, all of these different um, models which show, hey, if you play this play in this particular position, you're gonna get more likely to progress the ball in this fashion, the ball to be passed into this area, and in an honest slot system, X amount of times out of 10, you're gonna win this game against this team. Which is partially why in another video this week I'm going to lay out why it won't be that much of a surprise to either Liverpool or Arne Slot as to why they're in this position. In fact, they may even be one game behind where they thought they were going to be, and that's probably the Nottingham Forest game, in terms of win, uh, win rates. They're going to have run this thousands of times. The models that they have, it's not like they just sit down and go, should we just play football manager and see if this works? Like... These things are there to push out stats as to if you play this kind of player in this position, then that's how that's going to play. They will know that Ryan Gravenberch will have been more suited to this position. And they will know that the experimental elements came from someone like Jurgen Klopp. Because guess what? The difference now this season is you do want two sitting midfielders to give you the numbers overload a little bit deeper and then progress the ball down the field. The fact he's able to take the ball across his body and then push it back out helps a lot. Like, you know, he can then distribute it immediately down the field but it's also just his physicality element the height but also just where he's playing rather than one two three they're now playing two two one it makes a big difference to Liverpool that they can put two deep players in McAllister and Gravenberch in those two positions that wasn't necessarily traditionally a Klopp system Klopp I think I think Liverpool and Klopp both knew that the system was going to need to change in order for this team to move forward. There are plenty of other teams in the Premier League playing three in midfield. Liverpool's still playing three in midfield. The shape doesn't look actually all that different to where the Klopp was playing it. 
But overall, what we're seeing is they're fitting the pieces that they had into different positions. It doesn't mean that Liverpool don't need a six. It doesn't mean that Liverpool don't need to sign someone. It doesn't mean that Liverpool don't need more backup and depth and quality in those areas. I'm sure that there are uh, huge amounts of the stats department that think, hey, we could sign this guy and we'll marginally improve, etc., etc. But it does mean that in the short term, Liverpool have found a guy rather than having to go out and pay more and find that guy. And it's also changing the way that Liverpool play. Slot will have already looked at these players and said, hey, I know uh, where this guy's going to fit. But reprofiling players, changing where you make them run on the field is making a big difference to Liverpool. I guess the only difference now would obviously be we're going to come up against some very difficult challenges in the coming weeks. Everyone has run through those. I've run through those a few weeks ago on this channel, but now everyone's running through those uh, in, the, in the present day. We know that these are going to be bigger tactical challenges, physical challenges, man-to-man -man challenges. People are going to come up with specific plans just to stop Ryan Gravenberg, specific plans just to stop Alexis McAllister. And the same goes for Soboslai, Curtis, and like Liverpool's midfield is going to get man-to-man -man marked. It's going to get a pretty intense um, once-over, MOT, whatever you want to call it, from opposition players in the coming weeks. Um, I think we need to be braced for the first time when Liverpool play X. Uh, formation when the manager, another manager tries this and it doesn't go so well for Liverpool. There are going to be times where they do get caught out. It's interesting, like, you can see very often smaller teams try to score very early on against Sane Slot as a Liverpool manager, right? And I'm not saying you don't want to score early, it massively improves your chances of winning, right? But what it, does, what it would do is completely change how Ryan Gravenberg and Alexis McAllister play and allow the opposition more control in those area of the, areas of the field because they can compress the game a little bit more and invite Liverpool onto them where you'd argue Gravenberg and McAllister do still have a lot of good attributes but Liverpool want the game in like a game state of we're transitioning onto you rather than having to just push on. I'll be interested to see how Arteta, especially Maresca, plays that and how willing Liverpool are to give away some of that possession or control. And I think that's going to show how much we trust the current crop of players. doesn't mean we don't have quality, but how much we trust that current set of players to play that system. I'll be interested to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. Um, of course, there are loads of great stats that back up Ryan Grubben merch, but I want to talk about that holistic benefit. The way he does move is very satisfying, but I'm not 100% sure that that's what that represent, like what that really means for Liverpool. I think it is much more about this overall big picture that we're seeing. I want to know what you think the big picture is for Liverpool and where, where you think it's going. And I'll chat to you guys in a while. Much love. Bye.